Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create this spiral clock. Let's open a new document. Before we start, either press the Ctrl and K keys on your keyboard to open the Preferences window or go to Edit Preferences and choose General. Make sure the Scale Strokes and Effects option is checked and click OK. Also go to View and make sure the Smart Guides are turned on. First we'll create this art brush. Let's get rid of the fill and leave the stroke as it is. Select the Line Segment tool and single click on the artboard. Type 15 for the length and 90 for the angle. And here is our short line. Next we'll create lines at second and minute intervals. First go to Effect, Distort and Transform and choose Transform. Turn on the preview box to see what we are doing. Now change the horizontal move value to 20 pixels and the copies to 4. Let's make the minute line a little thicker. Before we can do any changes to the existing lines, first we need to expand them. Go to Object and select Expand Appearance. Now switch to the Direct Selection tool and select the last line. Then open the Stroke panel and change its weight to 3 points. Next we'll copy all 5 lines using the same method. The Transform option is very useful as you can easily adjust the space between the lines later. Let's zoom out. Select all the lines, go to Effect, Distort and Transform and choose Transform. This time change the horizontal move value to 100 pixels and the copies to 12. Let's delete the last line. First go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Select the line and press the Delete key on your keyboard. Now draw a straight line that will start at the bottom of first short line and end at the bottom of the last one. Let's change its stroke weight to 2 pixels. Now zoom in on the first short line, select it and press the Delete key a couple times. Now do the same with the last line. Next we'll create a white shadow effect. First select everything and group it together. Then create an extra copy. Press the Ctrl and C keys on your keyboard to copy it and Ctrl B to paste it in the back. With the bottom layer still selected, double click on it to change its name. Let's type white. Select the above layer and rename it to black. I'm going to select all the lines and move it up so you can better see what we are doing. Select the bottom layer and change the stroke of the lines to white. Now using the arrow keys on your keyboard, move it down and right to create a shadow. Let's zoom in and make a few adjustments. Select the layer with the white lines and let's move them up and left. Zoom out, select everything and move it onto the artboard. In the next several steps we will create these numbers. Select the Type tool and single click on the artboard. Let's zoom in. Now choose your preferable fonts. Type the first number, highlight it, 
Then open the paragraph window and choose Align Center. Then go to the Selection tool and move this number to align with the thick line. Next we will create 11 copies of this number and place them under each thick line. With the first number still selected, go to Effect, Distort and Transform and choose Transform. Set the horizontal move value to 100 and the copies to 11. Before we can change the numbers, first we need to expand them. Go to Object and choose Expand Appearance. Select the Type tool, highlight the first number and change it to 6. You can start with any number you wish. Now change the other numbers accordingly to the clockwise order. Next we will add a white shadow using the same method we used with the lines. First select the numbers. If you wish, you can rename this layer. Now create a copy and with the bottom layer selected, change the fill to white. Then, using the arrow keys on your keyboard, move it down and right. Select everything, then go to Object and choose Expand. Now, when you switch to the Direct Selection tool, you will be able to select each shape individually. This is a very important step. If you forget to expand everything, you will get a warning message when creating an art brush later on. And we are almost ready to create an art brush. We would like the top of the brush to line up with the top of the short lines. However, we would like to create more space below the numbers. First, select the pen tool and let's zoom in. Now click below the first number to add a single anchor point. This will set the bottom borderline of our art brush. Then select everything, including the single anchor point we've just created and group it together. Next, switch to the Rectangle tool and draw a rectangle that will fit all the lines, numbers and the anchor point tightly. Let's move it down. Switch to the Direct Selection tool and select the two end anchor points on the right. Then click on the Free Transform tool, hold and select the free Distort tool. Now click on the bottom anchor point and while you are holding down the Shift and Alt keys, drag your mouse up to bring those two points closer together. Let's duplicate this shape. Select the top green shape, right click with your mouse, Choose Arrange and bring to front. Then select the two top parts, go to Object, Envelope Distort and choose Make with Top Object. Next we will add a gradient. Select the bottom shape, then open the Swatches panel, click on the Swatch Libraries menu icon, choose Gradients, metals and use chrome. If you wish, you can adjust the gradient. If you press the letter G on your keyboard and adjust it directly on the screen or open the gradient panel and adjust it here. Before we can use a gradient to create an art brush, first we need to expand it. Select the bottom shape then go to Object and choose Expand. Select both objects and align them to the center. Finally, open the Brushes panel and drag this design here. Choose the Art Brush, 
click OK and OK again. And we can see our new brush. We can delete everything from the artboard. In the next several steps, we will create a spiral and apply this brush to it. Let's zoom out. Click on the line segment tool, hold and select the spiral tool. Change the fill to none and the stroke to black. Now click on the artboard, hold and drag to create a spiral. If you are not familiar with using the spiral tool, I would recommend that you watch my previous tutorial. I've included a link to it in the description below. With the spiral selected, open the brushes window and click on the brush we've just created. Now let's make some adjustments. Open the stroke panel and increase its weight. Then click on the profile window from the tab toolbar and select the width profile number 4. Click away to deselect and if you wish you can adjust the spiral even more by using the width tool. If you would like to learn more about the width tool, please check out my other tutorial. You will find a link to it in the description. Now click on the path, hold and drag to increase the width. Let's create an extra copy. Press V Ctrl and C keys on your keyboard to copy it and Ctrl F to paste it in front. Then switch to the Rotate tool and click in the center to set the rotation point. Now click on the outer end of the spiral and drag it up. Let's adjust the position and rotation. Finally, we will trim the ends. Select the rectangle tool, swap the fill and the stroke and draw a rectangle to cover the artboard. Now select everything and press the control and number 7 keys on your keyboard to create a clipping mask. In the second part of this tutorial we will make this background. First let's lock the existing layer and create a new one. Now bring it to the bottom. Next select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to cover the artboard. Let's change its fill to black. Open the gradient panel, select white and black gradient and apply some dark colors to it. Now adjust the gradient's position. Let's lock the bottom layer and create a new layer. Next we'll create some glowing lights, stars and clouds. Let's start with this light. Press the letter L for the ellipse tool and draw a small circle. Let's zoom in on it. Open the gradient window, choose white and black and change the type to radio. Next select the black color stop, change it to white and turn down the opacity to 0%. Now adjust the slider. Next we'll create this small star. First let's duplicate this shape. Now scale it down, create an extra copy and rotate it by 90 degrees. Select both shapes and group them together. Next we'll create this cloud shape. First let's copy the round shape. Scale it up and bring the upper edge down to create an ellipse. Now open the gradient window and adjust the middle stop's location. Next we'll add a few effects. 
go to Effect, Distort and Transform and choose Roughen. Now adjust the values if needed. Let's add another effect. Go to Effect, Stylize and choose Feather. Change the radius to about 23 pixels. If you wish, you can adjust the gradient and the opacity. Let's zoom out and create a copy of this circle. We will use it later. Next, we will create two symbols. First, open the Symbols panel and drag one of the small shapes into it. If you like, you can give it a name. Now do the same with the other shape. Let's zoom out and move all the little shapes away. Next choose one of the symbols, then select the Symbol Sprayer tool and create lots of little symbols all around the artboard. Try to use different symbol tools to shift or resize the existing symbols. If you would like to learn more about the Symbol Sprayer tool and how to use it, please check out my other tutorial. I've included a link to it in the description. After you are done creating your symbols, you can duplicate this layer, rotate it and change its opacity. Next, select the other symbol and repeat the same steps. Now let's lock the symbol set layers to prevent them from shifting. Then click on the ellipse and place it onto the artboard. If you like, you can resize it and change its opacity. Now create a few more copies and adjust them. Next, we'll use the single circle shape we've created at the beginning to add an extra sparkle to our clock. Move it onto the artboard and place it at the edge of the clock's dial. Now create a few more copies and change the sizes. Next, create an extra layer and move this circle into it. This will place our glowing circle in front of the clock. Now create more copies and place them along the edges. You can also adjust the gradient or opacity. Finally, unlock all the layers, then select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle to cover the artboard. Now select everything and press the control and number 7 keys on your keyboard to create a clipping mask. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.